One of my favorite expressions is a man or woman should rule a nation the way one would fry a small fish. I try to treat everything like a small fish. Certainly I'm not ruling a nation. It's to say we don't take anything too seriously. And if something is very serious, we treat it like a small fish, dealing only with what is manageable. Welcome. Somebody should invent a silent mini-fridge. Here I'm in Moab, Utah, and if we zoom out a little bit, we can see we're not too far from the Colorado border here. And up here are the Sunnyside Coke ovens that I've made many videos about. And if we just go southeast here, we see copper mines. How very interesting. This area is so red and copper-like, a wasteland. And then we have this copper mine. Very interesting ideas around the copper mine. I believe it's said that much of the copper in Egypt and in other parts of the world where they can't explain copper artifacts were said to have been mined in Michigan, I believe. Somewhere up there. It's a very pure copper mine and it's said to be so pure. One of the purest in the world. And here I've never heard of this copper mine here in southern Utah. Just by accident today, I was doing a little research on an old book called Weird America. And here they tell a story. A lot of weird stories, actually. I look forward to going through this whole book. And it tells a story of the big Indian copper mine on a rock plateau that's been cleared by bulldozers in preparation for mining development. This took place in 1973. I think this book is out of print. A party of rock collectors led by Lynn Ottinger, who's still alive in fact and has a little shop in Moab. I was very excited. I just gave his shop a call and told him I'm interested in an interview. Well, anyway, he was picking over the area and found pieces of brownish bone and teeth. He knew basic excavation procedures and immediately began looking for the brown stains of decaying organic matter. It was not long before they found such an outline and carefully cleared the sand away from the top of a large intact bone. He stopped digging immediately, realizing the importance of this discovery. It was that of huge bones, presumably human, and they were in a situ, a semi-rock of incalculable age. A week later, Ottinger returned to the site with Dr. Marwit, a professor of anthropology at the U of U in Salt Lake City. With a team of photographers, a news reporter, and other observers, Professor Marwit began to dig, and photographs and movies were recorded. They uncovered the lower halves of two human skeletons. The bones were articulated, laid out in natural configuration, showing that the bodies were intact when covered by soil, and that the bones had not fallen or been washed into the stratum from some higher and newer level. A number of other factors indicated that the bones were as old as the stratum in which they laid, which may not be that old. The age of the level, they tell us a hundred million years, of course, stupid. But as Marwit observed the site, the bones appeared to be quite modern in configuration, otherwise not a hundred million years old. Not a half simian, but homo sapiens. So they concluded that the actual age would have to be determined in a lab. So all the bones were packed up and taken to the U of U, aka the local Smithsonian. And that is as far as anything ever went. If tests were done, no one admitted to it. Professor Marwit suddenly became disinterested and hard to reach. Eventually, he took a job in the East and left Utah. A year later, Ottinger gave up and recovered the box of bones, still untested. And here we go. He's got a little shop in Moab. And I look forward to having a chat with him in the next few days. And again, here's what that area looks like. And this seems to be a hot spot, especially with the discovery that was made, an official discovery. And now look at what they're doing, just mining the piss out of it. 
Here we have the copper mine. Around here, this is going to be petroleum, oil wells. And over here, some other kind of mining activity. Or rather, the erasing of something. Really just looks like a cleanup job. And this is just right over the hill from where all the tourists are looking at their arches. Again, thinking that these were formed over millions of years. And of course, you know my opinion. I think all these ruins are the remains of what were once wondrous and glorious structures that have been completely rendered unrecognizable as structures. But then they find bones and just sweep it under the rug, cart them off to the university to disappear. And as you recall when this story began, it starts off with on a rock plateau that had been cleared by bulldozers, preparing for mining. So that's how it begins. So this whole story begins with bulldozers clearing out this plateau. And then a private party stumbles upon bones. And really, what did they do here? They just cleared everything out. You can still see what looks like intelligent design or the footprint of it underneath all this rubble. And this is after bulldozers cleared everything out. Again, where were these bones? I'm sure there's still more. And this story has almost all but been forgotten. By accident, somebody sent me this old book, and I stumbled upon this passage, otherwise I would have no idea. Here we have a radon mine, not too far away. And here are some Peruvian-style lines, just cutting through the desert. And this is up on the northern tip of this strange shape here, looking like a very interesting kind of formation. And no doubt there's more to be discovered even though they have clearly done their best to wipe something out. So I hope to hear from this true explorer, in my opinion. I'm sure he has some interesting things to share with us. Most of us in this community are familiar with the expedition in the Grand Canyon, where Thomas Kincaid found Egyptian ruins and passageways into the Underrealm. In the Grand Canyon, this was in the paper over a hundred years ago, I believe the Phoenix Gazette. And all those discoveries disappeared in the shadows of the Smithsonian Institute. Everything covered up and denied. However, in the Grand Canyon, there is still to this day a no-fly zone over this particular area, and no hiking allowed, and not too far away from this site. Just a little jog down here, actually. In fact, I'll show you... This is the Temple Isis in the Grand Canyon. And in fact, all of these mountains are named after either Egyptian or you see here we have a Buddha temple. And over here we had a Shiva temple. So what do they know that they don't want us to know? I think they know what we know. That these are the remains of cities. Even the Native Americans in the area speak of cities under the Grand Canyon, in which they were brought down by another race, the ant people, that saved them in the last cataclysm. And what could we discover down here if we were allowed to explore it? What have they discovered since Thomas Kincaid in the early 1900s? But back to my Indian copper mine up here. This is a story I've never heard of. Let me know if you have any leads on this. In this part that I was looking at appears to be just a small part. You see the imprints and how they've scraped everything off the top. Well, we see the same imprints over here across the street. All of this is waiting to be excavated. And in fact, if we follow this down south, this formation here, we see a larger portion of the mine. And they understand. They're hitting it pretty hard here. And so many... Anomalous patterns, we would be told, are attributed to mining. But like I've said before, I think these must have been giant star forts. Things that would not be allowed to stand in America, at least in North America. In the middle of the desert, where they couldn't explain it away. Now we see star forts in America, and they usually have a good story for them. How they were part of a battle, a military strategy. But if a star fort was out here, in Moab, 
Utah not becoming a state until the late 1800s, they would have no way to explain such a thing. So mining comes in. And in fact, when they begin mining, it reveals itself as either a step pyramid or a star fort. We see the corners and the sharp, unnatural angles of what this building may have looked like, or city. And before they began mining, it would have just looked like the surrounding area, just covered, and yet we can see levels. And now we're unearthing bones in this area and covering it up, yeah. And I think this is really what people are drawn to when they go out to these places. They just don't know it. This is the remains of civilization being destroyed by water, plasma, liquefaction, just reshaping the realm, but leaving something behind as well. Something for us to discover and remember our past. But here I've just found an article on the Moab man. Here's Lynn, looks like in the 70s, carefully excavating these bones. A little tool and a broom. And you can see how it fuses right into the bedrock. And Lynn said it was very loose, not hard at all. What led me to that was this article, trying to discredit this work in 2006. And they had a link here to pictures of the skeleton. Here we can see some more bones. And remember, this is a site that had been cleared by a bulldozer. So what was really cleared out? What was on the top half? So what Lynn found was the first findings, at least public. Then in 1971, we have this. In 1990, these were discovered. And again, 1990. And we have to remember that bone is a mineral. It is a type of rock. And if a bone could be fused in to this material, this really lends to the idea that this cataclysm is very recent, especially when the soil was very soft, not something that took place millions of years. This is what seems to be very recent. And here we're going to go look at a little fort called Fort Popham. It's a full moon, and my nose is just flowing. But I just wanted to look at this fort. Recently, Emily Suzanne visited this place, and it's said to be a Civil War fort. Here we can get a little look at what's left of it. Unbelievable how massive just the ruins are. And we see ruins everywhere. Giant old world construction here again and again and i'm surprised they didn't destroy it i'm very thankful these are the kind of blocks i'm finding buried in the utah desert i recognize them right away and this is just super advanced this is just the ruins and again the whole island is man-made we see sharp corners and again they're just selling it all off and they're not even glorious enough to call star forts, even though they are. Same builders, but they have all the characteristics. The plug holes. And what I find fascinating is they're just littered all over the place here. Just littered. Here's a random one over here, leading into the Underrealm. And I would like to show you Emily Suzanne's video, where she goes inside some of these. Oh, so fascinating, and I can't talk right now. I'll make it quick. I want to show you this, just a little jog away, how artificial this is. This is like an old neighborhood, an old seafaring people neighborhood. And you can see their canals come in, just how we have neighborhoods today. They've laid these neighborhoods into the water, showing that these were a water people, a seafaring, water-traveling people. Look at this. All artificial. How does nobody question this? Over here as well. So the rivers are just the main canals, and there would have been dwellings. Does anybody think this is natural? Anyone? Let me show you something else. Just next to this Fort Pop Ham, and Ham, again Ham, we have Fort Baldwin, and she visited this place too, and I hope to show you some of that footage. Same thing, they're just selling it off, and history quickly disappearing. And here it says Fort Baldwin State Historic Site, 
Whatever, I don't see anything. But if we go down here a little bit, we see something. Boom. Battery Kogan Fort Baldwin. And this is in Maine. Pure ruins. And what Emily was showing, she was walking inside of these. And they're actually like residences. These are the residences that I was saying were missing in these aquatic neighborhoods and they had fireplaces separate quarters and just made of beautiful material i mean just look at this and we're told these are civil war era ruins that's what they say civil war era ruins this looks like something totally futuristic here compared to these stupid box houses over here which are pretty large and look at this. Not even a little picture. Here we go. Offering up a little picture. There we go. And Emily's video was much better than this stupid picture. She was walking all over here, showing the plug hole, and walking into the quarters with brick fireplaces. Brick? Oh yes. These are packed with brick. Civil War. So what, were they just marching out here, building things like this in the middle of nowhere during the Civil War? I mean, look at where we are. Look at this. Way up here. It, who cares? There's no need to build any defenses up here during the Civil War. No, there's no action up here. This should be completely remote and unexplored, according to our narrative. Look at where we are. Look at this. Somewhat remoteness. Probably only accessible by boat. And there we go. Just two star forts on this little peninsula. And littered. Littered with more than they're disclosing. Here one, and this beautiful one. Number two, then we have a number three here. Here we go. Look at these ruins in nowhere land. They don't want to show it to us. Look at this. I click on the fort and they show me some wilderness. Here we go. A plug hole. So super cool. Look at this. A little tower or something. Here we go. Look at this tower. Observation tower in the middle of nowhere. And really remarkable that there's brick on the inside and then faced with other materials. I mean, this isn't just some stupid construction. These are supposed to be log cabin times. And very little explanation. Look, not even a road going out to these. What else is buried in this forest? Okay, so here's Emily Suzanne's video. And I encourage you to watch the whole thing, but I just wanted to show you a few shots of this Fort Baldwin that look like nothing impressive from the Google Earth. Really looking very modern. The ruins of it, very beautiful structure. I could imagine glass windows in this, how contemporary it would look. And is this what the old world looked like? All the neighborhoods I was showing on the Google Earth along the waterways, can you imagine? And we see these structures all throughout the realm, but we're told they're military facilities in a horse and buggy time in the middle of nowhere with no roads leading to them. In my opinion, it's game over. It falls apart. Here again, all the different materials. Concrete, stone, brick on the inside, as I'll show you in a minute here. Oftentimes, I think cement has been poured over these in recent times to cover something up. The ones that are more remote just have grass in them. And look at the condition of this stone, or whatever it was. Look at this. Nobody assembled these stones like this. What happened. It's as if it has just fused into block. And then on the right side, we see what looks like block work in better condition. Here again, unbelievable. And this photo looking like concrete in which the lime is leaching out of. Let me know what you think. And here again, the mass of it is underground level. It's not even like up there by the trees. The bulk of these structures are below ground level. And here, a little look at the inside. I mean, what is going on here? These look like they may have been ornamental at one point, not like prison bars like they seem now. And here, you can see the fireplace with brick. I mean, this is so old, it's fused into all of this ruin. This is not an afterthought. And it's very nice. It doesn't look like a military fort. It looks like a residence. If it was a military fort, it wouldn't have this nice mantle. And look at all these different types of brick and block 
and concrete. And this is ruins. Again, the explanation is Civil War era ruins. Calling this a fort. It's almost like YouTube doesn't want me to skip to the good parts. I can see it in the small window. Now here, just a look at this block work on the outside. At some points, it looks like concrete, where I was just showing you everything leaching out. But here we see block work that is just so fused. Here we can see a fireplace, and we see all the brickwork. And then she'll walk into another room right next door, and there's another fireplace. And it just goes on and on. It was so dark. She pulls out a flashlight, and we really can't tell how far back it goes. This is really advanced for what looks like nothing from above. And really interesting. The cat's really on one today. I think she's going to get the boot in a minute. It's a full moon. I usually give her about 20 meows before she gets kicked out. So here we are. Even the rocks all around look like they may have been blocks at one point and what remains is just impeccable just absolutely impeccable even today i would love to have 500 square feet of this building this excellent quality pop some doors and windows in here we can see a plug hole with grass like i was talking about and just these signs everywhere, Battery, Holly, I mean just stupid, there's so many of them they just gave them all these names. And this is something else, let's be perfectly realistic here, this is not some leftover civil war structure. And here what seems to be a brick wall and absolute ruins. Here as well, brick within here, just lime pouring down from above, fusing everything together, but we can see the bricks popping out. All different size bricks, and I don't know if what I'm imagining is concrete was actually stone or brick at one point. Really, really hard to tell. And here, look in here, look at this fireplace. Look at this brick, what beautiful condition for a civil war military fort no way no way look they had to bust it up a little i'm sure it was very ornamental and they just couldn't have that look at these two different materials plus the floor it's not like a dirt floor i mean if it was just a military fort you would skip a lot of these expenses and look at this here we can see the stonework and just unbelievable quality and i've been looking at star forts for years and this has definitely moved me this what seemed like an impressive star fort is actually very remarkable. Here now, she's moved to the right to another room, and we see another fireplace on the left this time. And there you go. What are these rooms? What do you think? I encourage you to check out her video. Here are some rocks towards the end of the video just laying on the ground. And this is clearly block work. Look at this. Block work fused? into one larger rock. This is evidence. This is absolute evidence here. And it gets better. Upon examining these rocks, we see artistic engravings here looking like a red phoenix. Look at this. A cardinal. And I can't tell if it's a relief or what. Pretty unbelievable that it's on this same stone with the block work. I don't know if I've said it before, but I'm not impressed with petroglyphs of the Southwest. I think they seem childish. I think what's more interesting are the melted buildings that the petroglyphs appear to be on. And I kind of feel like the petroglyphs are a distraction. And I don't want to say that's the case here, because this is very interesting. But I am prone to be suspicious, that's all. Whenever I see petroglyphs, with my new eyes, I've noticed that it's a distraction, so that we don't notice what else is going on. But in this case, this is very, very impressive. Whoever did this did a nice job. But again, I think potentially a distraction. When we look at this block work that has fused into this blob, we can see why somebody would put this distraction here. The melted blob rock is more interesting than this nice artwork but I'm gonna have to stay with my original theory that this is simply a distraction from what has really transpired here. But no doubt somebody was a really good artist. That's all. I just think that this is recent. 
This is a great time to say I don't know, and I was hoping to get an interview with that guy, but I don't think it's gonna happen. So I'll just prepare this video and hope to hear from him for a future episode. And that is pretty much a wrap. I thank you all for being here. I love you all. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you soon.